Joe, do you ever get the feeling that we're being watched? Hey. Or maybe uh, the feeling that we're being not watched. It's 5.45 p.m., which means it's time for BCTV's Nightly News Roundup. I'm Roland Boyden, sitting uh, alongside Joe Bushy, uh, looking out over Brattleboro behind us, back in our 230 Main Street BCTV studios, uh, enjoying a look of uh, the nighttime, as close to a cityscape as one can get uh, here. Got this uh, church in downtown, looking out... Uh, Across the brick house there towards the river, quite a view. All right, uh, let's talk about what's coming up on the deck tonight. There you go. Uh, well, uh, a security scare in the schools uh, has everybody talking, and uh, hopefully we've got some of the answers, though they're in short supply still. Uh, we're going to talk about the Bartonsville Bridge. Bridge is back in town there, and uh, plenty to talk about in Guilford as well as they gear up to figure out where to send uh, those middle school kids. There's all that and more. We're going to do it in 15 minutes. Heck, we could probably even do it in a little bit less. Uh, let's get out there and enjoy this cold uh, Tuesday night. Welcome back to this uh, January 29th, 2012 edition of 545 Live. I'm Roland Boyden alongside Joe Bushy. We'll be taking you through the next 15 minutes into the regularly scheduled 6 o'clock news. Now, uh, that's footage of the Bartonsville Bridge here in Brattleboro. Um, let's uh, break it down on that for a minute. Uh, you could say it's maybe the most iconic image to come out of Tropical Storm Irene. As uh, amateur videographer Susan Hammond caught on video the Bartonsville Bridge uh, as it was washed downstream. Uh, and it's, uh, she caught it in its, really its last moments before that happened. We just saw it uh, washing down river. That was almost a year and a half ago now. Uh, Hammond herself was on hand with the likes of Governor Shumlin to participate in the ribbon cutting this past weekend as her hometown of Bartonsville reopened to the public the now infamous bridge for the first time since Irene. Many attribute the success of the project, whose FEMA funds were supplemented in large part by private donations, to Hammond's video, which set the stage for the Bartonsville Bridge to become uh, the indisputable symbol of recovery here in Vermont. Uh, had some uh, fun taking a look at all that footage, got to uh, hear her interviews. Uh, Governor Shumlin just recently posted uh, on his Facebook page uh, an image of the, that as well, so that's been fun to take a look at. Um, okay. As they get ready to cut the ribbon, we've got a, a little video, video for you as well. Let's, uh, let's take a moment, take a look at it. Video photographer extraordinaire, Sue Hammond. Yay! Two, three. Yay! Just a brief shot of the ribbon cutting on the Bartonsville Bridge. Uh, now, we're uh, gonna move on and talk uh, plenty of video as we uh, get a look at some of the stuff in the surrounding communities, BCTV surrounding communities, including Guilford. Uh, but first, Joe, uh, something on the minds of every educator, every parent, and just about everybody else in town as well. Uh, a, a warning sent out to students on Sunday prompted a uh, really a security scare. I'll let uh, you loose on the script here, and then we'll talk a little bit more uh, All about... All right. Well, uh, it should be no surprise to anyone that we'll start the stories with yesterday's scare at the schools, which began with an automated robocall Sunday night from BHS principal Steve Perrin and other principals in the district to parents of students throughout the Wyndham Supervisory Southeast, Wyndham Southeast Supervisory Union saying, quote, an individual may have made threatening statements that will cause us to take precautionary measures over the next few days. And while the buzzword has been lockdown, WSESU Superintendent Ron Staley yesterday clarified that schools were asked to secure their buildings, not go on lockdown, an emergency procedure that can include locking children in classrooms while a threat is mitigated. As of now, the threat at the heart of the controversy has had no new light shed upon it as local law enforcement continued to describe it as a general threat against school-aged children 
made in the past by an individual recently returned to the area, and while an increased police presence near the schools is expected to continue, there will be no direct action taken to resolve the threat, with Brattleboro Police Chief Gene Wren telling the Brattleboro Reformer yesterday that, quote, right now, there is nothing to investigate. We're going to try and get you any, really, any information that we can on uh, the nature of, of how this is proceeding, and I think really the message we've heard so far from uh, uh, local law enforcement and uh, educators in the area is just uh, trust the schools, trust the schools to keep your kids safe and keep them uh, going on in their education. All right, well, uh, we'll move on and talk uh, budget, budget happenings, getting ready uh, to head into the town meeting season pretty soon, and uh, towns are starting to figure out just what they're going to put on the warnings. Uh, we're going to head to Guilford in just a moment and talk about that. Heck, uh, why not? Uh, Go into the close-up here as I'll, I'll take a stab at this one. See what we can get for our stories here. All right, let's throw up the graphic. See if I can find out what I'm talking about here. There we go, it's the middle school debate. Uh, the Guilford School Board has this week again postponed their final decision in the debate um, over whether or not to close down their middle school operations in Guilford, send the town's 7th and 8th graders to uh, the wide world of BAMS, a move that would save the taxpayers at this point of Guilford uh, an estimated $33,000 next year, but has some worried that the cost for uh, the students' educational experience could be more uh, than financial. That uh, debate uh, got, a, got a special town meeting uh, and it's honor back in uh, November of 2012, and we're going to take a 545 Live rewind in time, get a, get a recap here, and take a look uh, as they debated whether or not to put this measure uh, to Australian ballot. Um, but instead, uh, members in Brattleboro, uh, I mean in Guilford, showed up uh, and decided to leave it to the yeas and nays of the town meeting reps, something that had members of the school board quite perplexed. I, I, I'm a little baffled by this right now, so I need to get a whole bunch more information before I move to the well, I, I don't want to be smart that. and cynical about this. The whole idea with the, the Australian ballot was to make sure that everybody in the town to vote on the issue. And at a last minute meeting held early yesterday morning, the Guilford Select Board had their own debate over how to handle budget decisions at town meeting as the town continues to expand the scope of the municipality's capital budget. Let's take a look at that clip as well. The reality is that the capital fund should be um, a part of a regular annual budget. It, it, it really, by pulling it out and having it be a special article, the last couple of years we've been creating the impression that they're kind of special, something that's not an every year deal. You can catch uh, all those Guilford meetings, including that special meeting we did a flashback to uh, in December. Catch up on all the budget happenings as well as they debate uh, the intricacies of the capital budget. Uh, they're all available at brattlebrewtv.org, where in fact you can find uh, live streaming for both our channels and uh, every local program to watch at your leisure as well. Again, brattlebrewtv.org, there's the shameless self-promotion. At least for now, uh, we'll promote some other media as well, including uh, Vermont Senator Patrick Leahy. Joe, he's got his own YouTube channel, and they've done a heck of a job posting uh, video his A-game media team, so we can uh, keep abreast of all the, the latest moves he's making in Congress. This, uh, this 113th go-round uh, kicks up. I'll, uh, again, send it your way so we can talk about uh, his, his stories. Well, all right, then. Next, Vermont Senator Patrick Leahy has again joined forces with Republican Senator Mike Crapo to introduce the Violence Against Women Reauthorization Act, which expired this past year for the first time since 1994 after House Republicans blocked the measure, which, prov which provides funds to assist victims of domestic and sexual violence, citing procedural problems, though many critics believe the GOP's resistance stemmed from the protections for Native Americans undocumented, and LGBT victims added to the act in 2012. Leahy says the Senate could vote on as early as next week, and he has faith that this time the bipartisan support will be too much for House Republicans to contend with, though immigration activists suggest that uh, Vabas' likely reinstallment can be attributed to the fact that sections of the bill that would have provided additional VSAS for undocumented victims have been dropped from the Acts 2013 edition. There you go. Uh, now, Leahy spoke uh, earlier. 
visas. visas. There Seems we go. Like the, VAWAs, violence against women visas. visas. Okay. There you go. All that VAWA visas. Sorry about that. V, uh, thrown in there. Provide additional visas for undocumented victims. And I believe we're also, looks like somewhere in there, we're trying to provide them with driver's licenses too, I believe, so they can. Part of a larger debate there as well. Uh, now, Senator Patrick Leahy, he says the focus uh, often is on how this uh, bill will help victims, but uh, citing his own uh, experience in law enforcement, he talked uh, a little bit as well about how it can help police. Let's take a look. The police don't pick and choose and say, well, we can, we can try to protect this victim, but not this victim. Uh, they, they, they want the tools to stop all of it. And if you'd ever been to one of these scenes and seen that and know that it's possible that we can take steps that might uh, avoid some of this violence, you'd want to move and move very quickly. All right, Joe, a few things to wrap up. We'd like to do our Media Buzz Roundup. Uh, just gather some of the footage uh, on YouTube, amateur footage on YouTube. That's where we'll head for our next story. Uh, this one's yours. All right, next, a group of skiers engaged in a low-tech Rope rescue have been documented on video when last week ski lift riders in Queechy, Vermont, were forced to climb from a suspended ski lift mount after a falling tree was caught in the lift's cable. Lines an incident that the video operators or the video creators managed to make the most of. That's right. Uh, we've got a snippet of their Here. somewhat humorous video as well. Oh, I've never had this happen before in all. Are they? That was kind of in all these years skiing. <coughs> oh, they're taking off their skis. Ooh. I think they're they're going to make them sit on that little seat. What little? Oh, the, that thing. Oh. Okay, I do not feel comfortable. <laughs> yeah, I do not feel like. <laughs> I'm gonna sit out the freaking road. What is that? That looks like Queechy's Memorial Park there, or something like Some that. Some huh? version of that, yeah. yeah. Not yeah. Uh, not exactly on uh, Mount Snow ski lifts for sure. All right, uh, a few things to wrap up, Joe. As we uh, time ticks down here on our 15 minutes of fame, uh, I want to. Do one of our new uh, little features that includes more of the, the fun split screens we tend to enjoy so much. That's our new on BCTV, a bit of shameless self-promotion. Now uh, we can talk about what's coming up this week, and we'll start uh, with a flashback to Shanty Towns. This is a piece from producer Greg McAllister uh, about the retreat. Town planning is a complicated affair. There's zoning laws, permits, but there's one place where the rules don't apply. And that would be Brattleboro's Shanty Town. 7.15 p.m. tonight uh, on this very channel you're watching. Skip That's up uh, to Channel 10 directly after this to see Shum's uh, budget address. We've got that as well. It's a budget that matches Montpelier's appetite for spending with Vermonter's ability to pay. That's what I got. I'll just say night, everybody. See you next time. <laughs> oh. Oh God! Do I really want to do this? Yeah. Oh my God! I'm gonna shit. I'm gonna shit.